In the last section, we started to initialize our Kubernetes engine. Now you'll notice that up here on the top right hand side, it looks like the spinner has stabilized, but I still see the one on the screen right here. So I'm just going to refresh the page very quickly. And then when I load back in, you'll notice that that spinner up there totally gone. So it looks like everything was ready to go anyways. So now that Kubernetes cluster is warmed up on my account, we can now create a new cluster. I'm going to click the create cluster button right here. And then that's going to present us with a little wizard to go through to create our new cluster. A lot of the information we have to enter here is going to be somewhat obvious, but some of it might be a little bit more esoteric. So let's walk through this thing step by step. The first thing we have to provide is a cluster name. Now the name you provide here, totally up to you. We're not going to really be using the name in many places. Me personally, I'll use the name of K8, actually about multi-cluster. That's better, like so. We're going to leave the location type as zonal, and then we get asked to select a zone. I recommend that you select a zone close to wherever you are trying to serve traffic to, or alternatively, just a zone that is close to your geographic location. So for me, I'm going to leave it on my default selection of US Central 1A. I'll then leave the master version as the default setting, and then we get asked to create something called a node pool. So the node configuration right here is describing the specifications of each different virtual machine that will be added to your Kubernetes cluster as a node. Remember that inside of our local development environment where we use Minikube, we only had one single node. But now that we're moving over to production, we can dramatically increase the number of nodes that we are going to get access to. The default is three, but we could very easily change this to one or 10 or even 100 if you have some application that demands that much computing power. For us, a number of three is totally appropriate, totally fine. After that, we get prompted to select a machine type. The machine type is really saying how or what specifications we want these virtual machines to have. The default selection is one virtual CPU with 3.75 gigabytes of virtual memory. You can also select micro and small right here and save a couple bucks. Now I want you to know that when I was initially developing this application and deployed it to Google Cloud, I tried using a small instance, like this small instance right here, and I eventually ran into a couple of issues. Now to be honest, I don't know if that was an issue I ran into because of some other unrelated setting, because I was doing a lot of iteration at the time, or if it was because the small instance did not have enough memory. Now my gut tells me that 1.7 gigabytes of memory is definitely enough for what we're doing, but I don't know, if you want to just guarantee that everything is going to work the first time around, go with the default option of one vCPU with a 3.75 gigabytes of memory. Now do remember that we're going to get three of those machines. So in total, we get three virtual CPUs and three times 3.75 gigabytes of memory, which is something like, I don't know, what is that? 11.25 gigabytes total or something like that. I could be wrong. Now we don't need to make use of any other advanced options on here. So the last thing we'll do is click create. Now I want you to understand, remember we are paying money for these instances. You will be billed. The free tier is probably not going to cover this to any significant degree. So at the instant you click create right here, billing kicks in. So at this point, if you feel like you're going to take a big break before completing the course, maybe don't click create just yet. Just make sure that as soon as you click create, you have enough time to finish up the course in a reasonable period of time. Remember, by my estimate, you might be paying like a dollar and 20 cents or something like that, a dollar 40 per day that this cluster is running. So just make sure that you kind of wrap everything up in a reasonable amount of time. All right, so I'm going to click create and that's going to start creating our cluster. Now this entire process of setup is going to take just about as long as all the other waits we had. So I'm just going to sit here and wait for a bit and let this thing do its little bit. Now, again, remember that the spinner down here might not resolve by the time that it's actually set up. So the spinner you really want to be watching is the notifications up here. As soon as this thing is solid, if it's still spinning down here on the body of the page, just try refreshing your browser and chances are this will get resolved as well. Again, remember that if you refresh the page, no issue whatsoever, you can refresh as much as you want and it will not interfere with the setup process. So feel to refresh willy nilly, totally up to you. All right, so we'll take a pause right here. When we come back to the next section, we're gonna start poking around the cluster that gets created for us. So quick pause and I'll see you in just a minute.